So good morning everyone. I'll be presenting on decision tree for management of post classic ectasia and I have no financial disclosures. So post classic ectasia is a surgeon's worst nightmare. It is rare enough with an incidence of 0 0.013 to 0 .0, uh, 0 0.935 and it is uh, highly significant as compared to PRK and SMILE but it is disastrous enough to warrant a streamlined definitive approach. So these are the current treatment options available which include contact lenses and spectacles for early non-progressive cases, uh, collagen cross-linking with a laser-based procedure or manual or in addition to intracorneal ring segment Im implantation in moderate to severe cases and in advanced cases with or without scarring uh, can be managed by keratoplasty or fecal implantation. But the current uh, treatment approaches available, uh, still there still persists a difficulty in decision making uh, regarding the type of treatment and same treatment cannot be applied to all because of the variable outcomes uh, in different types of cases. Plus there is no long term result available pertaining to the safety and the stability. So we need a little closer and a better approach uh, to uh, understand them and to treat them. So the purpose was to evaluate outcomes of treatment options for post classic ectasia. Uh, we in, uh, recruited for 50 eyes for 46 patients after ethics committee approval, a consents were taken, uh, extensive history and clinical examination along with imaging was done. Procedures, uh, PSOCT was performed as an additional confirmatory test and uh, it helped in imaging the bifringence and change in collagen orientation. Inclusion and exclusion criteria was uh, uh, strict and then we divided them into groups. They were followed up at 1, 3, 6, uh, 12 and 24 months. So the OCT has the ability to capture changes in corneal birefringence bioref resulting in changes due to collagen orientation. PLE demonstrated classic loss of compact checkered arrangement of collagen fibrils which was normally uh, which was normal in healthy post classic eyes and in normal patients. So uh, we had a very uh, specific criteria uh, which divided the patients into group according to treatment. So the first one was laser based corneal cross linking and it included patients who were more than 30, contact lens intolerant, TCT more than 475 and um, very significant or higher, uh, higher order abrasions and BCVA less than 20 by 60. Intracorneal ring segments in patients with decentered cones, aggressive progressors and TCT of 425 to 450. Fake was implanted in patients with the central cone, CL intolerant, a minimal uh, higher order abrasions and BCVA more than 20 by 60. So we studied the BCVA, the mean refractive spherical equivalent, K1, K2, K max and K mean pre and post. In the first group we noted a significant flattening in keratometric values, a reduction in MRSE and increase in BCVA with good outcomes. Most of them underwent standard topographic guided custom ablation. Few patients who had uh, decentered areas of ectasia and thinner cones, we planned a trek that was topography guided removal of epithelium and keratoconus where we customized ablation pattern to only the area of involvement and uh, it included 20 microns of stromal ablation to minimize tissue loss. We had good outcomes. Now in the second group, uh, in, uh, in the ICRS group, we noted a significant flattening in keratometry values along with improvement in BCVA and decrease in MRSC and it had good outcomes. In the fakic IOL group, we, uh, we saw improvement in BCVA and decrease in AM MRSE was noted. So they were first cross link When the refraction was stable after six months, we planned in pl uh, ICL implantation. Overall, in all the three groups, there was uh, there were good outcomes. There was loss of one line noted in one patient due to excess of post-operative haze and there was significant reduction noted in MRSE. Visual rehabilitation, 68% required spectacles, 28% required contact lenses and 4% required no form of visual rehabilitation. So there was improvement in BCVA, there was reduction in MRSE, significant reduction in keratometric values, increase in corneal stiffening and there was no progression noted at the end of two years. So uh, coming to the algorithm, so in a uh, suspected case of PLE, if the uh, PLE is early, we observe for progression and treat with the refractive error with glasses and contact lenses. In moderate to severe cases, if progression is noted, then it depend, the mode of treatment depends upon the TCT. If TCT is more than 475, we plan for a TPRK with cross-linking. If it is between 425 to 450 and Kmax is more than 55 and if it is centered, we plan a PTK or a manual or an ICRS implantation along with cross-linking. If it is decentered, we plan a TREK with cross-linking or an ICRS. If the TCT is less than 300, microns with scarring we plan a keratoplasty. If there is no progression noted uh, we go ahead with the contact lens but if the patient is contact lens intolerant we go ahead with a fake IOL implantation. So to conclude uh, what was known is several treatment options were available to arrest the progression of ectasia. 
confusion prevails regarding which therapeutic option is best suited for the patients with PLE. What the study added was this proposed algorithm helped to customize treatment for each group of PLE and visualizing treatment for each group of patients with PLE helps in optimizing treatment outcomes. Thank you.